Bonjour YouTube, welcome back to our channel. Today we are in Saint Denis, Necropole de France. So, bonjour. So, we're going to take you on the tour, but we're just going to be talking from home because we were freezing. It was horribly cold, and on top of that, we really didn't feel like you know it's a necropolis, so we didn't really want to talk loud yeah. among the tombs and people we didn't feel like it was a really good idea so let's go so the story with Sandini begins in the year of 250 he was decapitated and according to the legend he carried his head from Montmartre until Saint Denis, where he died. And why was Saint Denis decapitated? Well, that's because at the time, Christianity was not the official religion in France. He was one of the Christian martyrs. In 5th century, Saint Genevieve convinced the Parisian clergy to buy that land to build a chapel dedicated to Saint Denis. That was worthy of Saint Denis. Yeah. So by 7th century, the chapel had attracted some attention and the first king of France, whose name was Dagobert I, or Dagobert I, founded the monastery over there. And uh, at the same time, he was the first king to be actually buried there. By the 12th century, the abbot Suger, uh, who was an advisor to the kings of France, Louis VI and Louis VII, he was a very powerful man at the time. And um, he saw this Roman church that was there already, um, that was a bit darker, the ceiling was low, yeah. uh, you know, it was dark and somber. And he thought, you know what, this is not worthy of Saint Denis. It needs to be bigger, it needs to be brighter. And at the time, the Gothic style was just picking up, was just being born even, I would say. So Suger, what happened is, he got a little bit of styles from Normandy, even from England, even from, from all over the place. He decided to extend the church, make it bigger. Mm -hmm. The new choir was built with the Gothic style that we see today. One more thing to add about Suger is that he really wanted to, uh, he wanted to attract more kings in there. He wanted to give the prestigious status, royal status to this basilica. Legend of Saint Denis was again brought back to life and the kings were told that if they're buried there, then Im immediately they'll be protected by Saint Denis and no matter what they've done on this earth, they would be protected to go directly to heaven. Yeah, that's why all the statues, uh, their eyes are all open. And relaxed. Yes, they are relaxed because they believe that they trust in Saint Denis and they will be going into heaven yeah. with the help of Saint Denis. Protected, basically, yeah. that he would take them directly to heavens. So the next we come to is Louis IX or Saint Louis. If you watch our episode from Saint Chapelle, you will know who he is. He was the king who brought the main relics into France, uh, such as the crown of thorns of the Christ and some fragments of the cross. And at the time, he made France the most powerful country in the Western Christendom. So Saint Louis, what he did with uh, the basilica, he um, removed the Roman nave and had the much bigger gothic nave that we see today mm -hmm. constructed in place the basilica looks more unified obviously grander and bigger and this is with him where basilic de saint denis becomes the royal necropolis officially so as you can imagine for centuries the royals were buried there all the time this was the main necropolis the tourists can also mention the statues they were close to actual size of that person like height weight and the facial expressions after renaissance they were having the actual faces of those who were buried because they were basically using the uh, death masks yeah and that's how they you could see for instance Ponsard the first yeah. Uh, or Henry the second and their tombs are done in such a way that the first level is what they looked like when they died and then the upper level is them again but this is the representation of their souls so they are praying towards uh, the sunrise to they're looking towards Saint Denis and at the same time they're all dressed in their beautiful royal attire 
And that was a period where the figures of animals were used at the feet of the royal family members, such as lion, dogs, and lions they symbolize power, whereas the dog symbolizes fidelity. Loyalty. Yeah, loyalty. Yeah. And then we arrive to the French Revolution. There were two instances of the tomb profanations on two separate days. The revolutionaries basically got into the basilica and what they've done is that they've opened up the tombs, they've opened up the caskets, the uh, sarcophags and um, they took out all the lead because they needed it for the bullets, you know, for the revolutionary causes mm -hmm. and at the same time if they found anything valuable as well, they obviously they took that now that created a huge problem because what happened was as they opened all of this sarcophag they just took the bones and they threw them all into what some people say they threw other people say they placed them carefully the guy that we saw she actually told us she doesn't think that they were carrying it you know carrying the bones carefully she doesn't think so so most probably some of them were thrown we don't know but the idea is that the remains of the of the dynasties were thrown into mass graves and all mixed up. Yeah. Now, at the time, you shouldn't forget that Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI were not uh, there. They were not buried there. Yeah. And uh, if you watched our previous week's episode on Chapelle Expiatoire, you would know that we have been on a journey to show you the last days and the post-mortem days of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI, that at that time, Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI, they were not buried in Basilica, they were not in Saint-Denis, they were buried in uh, Cimetière de la Madeleine. You can see our previous episode from last week on Chapelle Expiatoire. So their bones were not mixed in with other uh, remains of the royals. And Napoleon I, he stopped the neglect of Basilica Saint-Denis and ordered its renovation and also he wanted his son to be buried, which was never the case. Then we come to Louis XVIII. Louis XVIII yeah. and the period of restorations. Now Louis XVIII was the brother, as you know, mm -hmm. brother of Louis XVI. He became the king after Napoleon. Well, there was a short period, so it was 1815, I believe, he became the king, right? Yes. And um, he started uh, immediate uh, re uh, restorations of the uh, Basilica de Saint Denis. The bones were transferred into a little kind of room in the crypt. As you go down in the crypt, you will see it on your left, if mm -hmm. you're coming from the left side. It's a small room, and that room now contains all the bones mm -hmm. from those mass graves that obviously couldn't be identified, they couldn't figure out who was who. As you can see on each side, there are names of the kings and the bodies, but the bones are inside here. They put the bones on both sides of the, of the room, and then they put huge marble walls, and on the marble walls they wrote who is in there the bodies of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were transferred from... Cemetery de Madeleine. Exactly. And Sinan will tell the story how they uh, identified their bodies. Uh, after the decapitation, the bodies were put aside in a mass grave, completely naked, but Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI bodies, they were never undressed. Yeah. I think that's what made them found so easily because at the end of the day, they were the only ones who were dressed. Now obviously, as you know, Marie Antoinette was executed a few months later after Louis XVI. What the guide has told us is that they may have had less trouble identifying Marie Antoinette because she was more recently killed. But for Louis XVI, officially they found him, yes. But what the guy has told us is that they, they, it must have been a bit harder for Louis XVI's body to be identified because they didn't have much time. They needed to transfer the bodies very quickly under the order of Louis XVIII. There was no technology back then with the DNA and all of that. So what happened later on, fast forward to our time, is there is the heart of Louis XVII yeah, that you can sound. actually see in the basilica mm -hmm. and they did verify that indeed the heart Marie Antoinette Marie Antoinette they had it from the hair because they got the hair as well 
Marie Antoinette and the heart, they matched. The DNA is matched. So she's his mom, they matched it. But they are not doing the DNA test for Louis XVI. Imagine if it's not him. We don't know that. They don't know that. But the remains were buried there in the Basilica. They're buried next to Louis XVIII. Obviously, everybody knew it was Louis XVIII. Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette, Louis VII. There is an empty slot for Charles X, yeah. whose body is currently in Slovenia. Slovenia, yeah. Because he was an exile and he died there. You can see the tombs from above, like the tombstones, but obviously you cannot go under. It's not open to public. I read it on the internet that saying that the area under the tombstones with coffins is actually apparently in a very bad state. We don't know, no one knows when, if they ever open it to public, but at the moment you cannot go there, it's closed. And finally we come to the part of Viollet le Duc the main architect who saved so many buildings in 19th century, including Notre Dame de Paris and Basilica de Saint Denis. It was Viollet le Duc who was charged with the restructuring of the vault under the choir of the Basilica. The vault was for the imperial bodies to be there under the order of Napoleon III. Before he came to work there, he was told that and this is a burial ground of the Bourbon family. They only had a tunnel, so it needs to be done into something more majestic, such as a beautiful imperial vault. He removed the tunnel, he started digging too deep, and he came across old uh, sarcophagus from Gallo-Roman times. And he put it back, he covered, he continued building the vault. Um, the guy told us that he just probably didn't want to deal with this because that would completely stop the project and the funny thing is that because Viollet le Duc made notes of everything, he made a note of that and eventually in the 20th century his note was found. So in the mid 20th century they go <laughs> and they destroy the imperial vault completely because there is a huge cemetery underneath the basilica. They discovered a massive cemetery from the Gala Roman times. The basilica is literally standing on the ground of like a huge cemetery from the Roman times, from Gala Roman times. Pagans. Pagan times, yes. They have restarted the project of reconstruction of the tower. The tower was damaged by uh, lightning in the 19th century and it was Viollet le Duc who demanded to dismantle the tower to avoid any catastrophe. Yeah. And nowadays, the project has been approved to actually rebuild it. So it should be done by approximately 2032. They have started uh, fortifications on the facade uh, to basically fortify the foundations and the building and the structure itself in order for the tower to start going up. And already they've discovered some burial grounds underneath. And finally is the time to visit Kavayekol Organ. The 19th century organ was so innovative due to its ability of creating different sounds based on the pressure to the keys. So that the sound changes. Basically it's very complicated. It's so complicated. <laughs> they basically take you up to the, to the organ. Uh, you also walk around the um, area like of the front facade. You look at the mechanical clock that is now electrified. So you look at the mechanism behind it and uh, there's a bit of history how the Lady Duke changed the rosas. It's a very immersive visit. Yeah. You go and you check out the uh, souffleur, like the place that used to... Because you know the or organ works on air and back in the day they had people standing on the, on the platforms. Yeah, on the manually. Pedals, <laughs> and they had to manually press yes. up and down in order to get the air flowing into the tubes, into the instrument yeah. and um, it's this visit they happen only four times a year yes. 
Uh, they're extremely difficult to book. Yeah, uh, limited place. Extremely limited place. We were yeah. 12 people only, and I, I checked, I checked, the next visit is on the 12th of February, already booked, there is yeah. no space available, and then there is nothing throughout the year so far. Probably yeah. they will be at the end of the year again. And there are also concerts for yeah. organ, which starts in April up until October. Yeah, they're free. Yeah, they're all free, so we just need to book it in advance, uh, which starts at 5 p.m. But for the guided tour, you should definitely book in one month in advance, I believe. Yeah. It's a very long tour, which took us more than three hours. Plus, it's so cold. It's so extremely it's, cold inside. <laughs> you should be so ready for this tour. Oh, if yeah. You are willing to. Sinan wasn't ready. I told him to wear a sweater. He didn't wear a sweater, so he just wore like like a t-shirt, and then afterwards he put like a like a like a I coat. Had a cardigan. You didn't have a cardigan. Yeah, I it was it was short this cardigan. Thing, this thing, like microscopic. And then my coat. And we walked hats. in, and he was already shaking, and you know he was freezing. Basilic de Saint Denis is very cold. Yeah. Just FYI, it is extremely cold inside. Uh, if you're going there, dress up, warm up and then you go, prepare to be cold. Yeah. And also I would like to just add that this is the last episode for the story of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI because this is their final resting place. Yeah. If you would like to see the previous episodes, please check the links. We'll put them up and down, not the links, but like the thing. Uh, it's the episode of Saint Chapelle. Start from there, and then Chapelle Expiatoire, and then obviously this episode. But you already watched it, so you can watch it again. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to see more of these videos, please don't forget to like, share, comment below, and subscribe. Until next week. Au revoir. Au revoir.